Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through how to install Arctix Linux. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot that disk, and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. If you're new and stopping by to watch an install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more videos. I'm here on the Arctix Linux website, and I'll make sure to go ahead and put a link in the description below. And the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and go to the download section up top. So after we click download, we'll be greeted by a bunch of ISO images and different mirrors that we can use. But there's quite a bit to look through here. We have first the uh, base image, which is just a terminal with no desktop environment. As you can see, it's available for the x86 64-bit architecture. And there's three different choices of each environment that you choose to download. So you have the OpenRC running it and S6 options here. And those are just different types of system or service managers since that is the focus of Arctix Linux to supply you with different ones from the one that's uh, pretty much standard across most Linux distributions nowadays which is systemd. So this is something unique kind of here to uh, Arctix. I know there's other distributions that uh, use these system or service managers, but I believe Arctix is really trying to push away from systemd. The one that we're interested in today is the Arctix community Qt run it version. Since we had a request for it on the channel, I felt like why not? So you can also choose between all the other desktop environments available. So you got the Cinnamon, LXQT, LXDE, Mate, Plasma, and so on and so forth here. All the community ones are just modified desktops by the developers of Arctix. So you have either the GTK or the QT modified versions. So I believe as it says above, the uh, QT is just a modified KDE Plasma desktop environment that was modified by the Arctix community. So let's go ahead and download this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this one. You can select whichever one you wanna download. The install process should be very similar here and give it a few minutes to go ahead and download. And now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch the Belenna Etcher app in order to flash the image onto a USB, CD, or DVD of my choice. So let's go ahead and do that. Just type in Belenna and it'll pop right up. Belenna Etcher is an easy to use application available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you wanna download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk such as UNEP Bootin or Rufus. All right, and the first thing I'm gonna do is select the image that I just got done downloading. As you can see here, I have the Arctix Community QT run it for the x86 64-bit architecture. I'm gonna go ahead and select this and hit open. And next, I'm gonna go ahead and select a target. And I currently don't have any USB inside my computer, so give me a moment to go ahead and put that in. And once that's in, it's automatically going to populate. But if you have more than one USB, CD, or DVD inside your computer, you can go ahead and hit the change button and go ahead and select the proper CD, USB, or DVD. Just make sure you do select the proper one because any and all contents of that USB will be erased during the flash process. So make sure you have one that's completely empty and that you don't need any of the data on it. So once you've selected the proper USB, CD, or DVD, go ahead and hit continue. And finally, hit the flash button. You'll have to go ahead and give it administrative privileges in order to run the program. So go ahead and do that. And now you've begun the flash process. After you flash the disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install Arctix Linux on. After that, you'll boot into your BIOS in order to change the boot order around and select the newly created bootable disk to be the first to boot. This is usually done by finding the correct key in order to boot into your BIOS for your particular computer. Usually it's one of the F keys like F2 or F10. And then finding a tab usually called boot order and exchanging the order around so that the bootable disk is first to boot. After you have that set up, you'll save and exit out of your BIOS. And then you should see a screen similar to this if you did everything correctly. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button, it really does help me out. All right, and if you see this screen, you've successfully made it to the install portion. What we'll do here is go ahead and select one of the two options here. If you are installing this from a CD, DVD, or ISO, directly you can go ahead and select this option. And if you have a USB stick or 
some other storage device that you're trying to install Arctix from, you can select the second option. There's also more options at the bottom, just so you know, but the one I'm interested in is from the Stick HDD. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter, which will log me into the live image of Arctix Linux. Give it a few moments here. All right, and once things are loaded up, we're going to select the Install Arctix option here on the desktop. Let's go ahead and double click on this. And now you can see the Arctix Linux installer. So let's go ahead and just make this full screen for us. The first thing we get to select is how we want to run the installer and what language we want to use. So American English is fine for me, that's the default, but you can go ahead and select whatever language that you're comfortable with and hit next. Following that, you'll select your time zone. So go ahead, I'll be in Boise today. And you can see here that the system language will be set to American English, United States. If you need to, go ahead and make sure to change that to whatever setting that you would like. And then as well as change the locale if you need to. So that's the second one here. After that, you can go ahead and select next. Now we get to set up our keyboard. So the default keyboard model for me is fine and English default is fine. So I'm just gonna test my keyboard by typing in QWERTY at the bottom and I typed in QWERTY and it came out QWERTY so everything works well. If you're happy with your keyboard, go ahead and hit next. Now we're given a couple options here. What's gonna happen is the installer is going to select uh, the first hard drive that it mounted. So make sure to go ahead if you have multiple hard drives, uh, SSDs or any other storage disk to go through the list if you have more than one and select the proper disk where you want to install Arctix Linux on. Because if you select the improper one, all the contents of it will be erased if you select the erase disk option. As it says, this will delete all your current data uh, that is present on the selected storage device. So make sure you select the correct one. I only have one storage space mounted currently on my system. So for me, this will work just fine. And I've already confirmed that this storage space is completely empty. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the erase disk method. And the other option you got here is to go ahead and allocate some swap on the disk. Uh, I'll go ahead and select the swap with no hibernation. And then at the bottom, you'll see how the partitions changed up. You see that they have a 28.8 gigabyte ext4 partition for the storage of Arctix Linux and then swap 3.2 gigabytes that's just if your physical memory overflows, it will go ahead and use this as a temporary physical memory that's located on your storage disk. It's also used for some background processes that aren't time intensive. So uh, the other thing is the bootloader location. We wanna make sure and go ahead and install a master boot record on the hard disk if we don't already have one. Of course, if you're installing Arctix Linux side by side with another platform, you may or may not want to go ahead and install the bootloader. So the first option is fine with me. You also can install it on the system partition um, or not to install it at all. I'm gonna go ahead and go with the default here. That's the best option for me. And now I'll go ahead and hit next. Following this, I'll get to put in my full name as well as the username I wanna to use to log in. Savvy. Nick PC is fine for my computer name, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put a password for my base user. You can also select the login automatically without asking for a password. I don't suggest this because someone could just reboot your computer and log in with your user. And at the bottom, you can use the same password that you entered above as the root user and administrative account. So if you wanna go ahead and do that, I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, check on that. After you're done with that, you can go ahead and hit next. And the following is a overview of what is gonna take place during the install. So it tells you all the location information that you selected, the keyboard information, as well as how the disk will be partitioned. So if you are comfortable with everything and you don't need to go back and change anything around that you missed, you're then ready to go ahead and install Arctix Linux. But of course, be careful because at this point, it will write all the changes to the disk. So you'll absolutely wanna make sure that the disk currently has nothing on it and that you're willing to 
go ahead and get rid of any data that might be on it. So go ahead and hit install. And at this point, the installer begins. So we'll give it a moment to install here. Artix Linux is based on Arch Linux and is a continuation of the Arch OpenRC Manjaro OpenRC project. It deploys a three different system or service managers, including OpenRC, S6, and Runit, in an attempt to uh, get distros away from systemd, which, which some argue is bloated and not properly maintained. The community versions and the one we're currently installing is a desktop environment that has been tweaked by the developers of Artix and comes with a suite of tools and packages available for people who don't want to spend the time installing their own and just come with the bare necessities of everyday computer use. We'll give it a few more moments to go ahead and finish up the installer. All right, and at this point, the installer is all done, as it says, and we'll want to go ahead and restart now if we want to boot into our newly installed system. And while rebooting, you'll want to make sure to go ahead and remove any installation media that you may have in the computer so you don't boot back into the installer or the live image of the system. Otherwise, you'll have to shut down and reboot once more and take out that media to get to your newly installed system. So let's go ahead and hit done. Give it a moment to go ahead and restart. And after things are loaded in here, you'll be welcomed by the login screen. So as you can see, it says Savvy Nick dash PC for my name of the computer. And then for my username, I made Savvy Nick as a user. And then I'm gonna go ahead and type in my password for that user. You can also select down here between two different types of sessions, Plasma and LXQT for the version that we installed. I'm gonna go ahead and do the LXQT desktop and hit the login. I'll give it a few moments here. And once the desktop's finished loading, you'll be welcome to your newly installed Artix Linux system. Congratulations, you've successfully installed Artix Linux at this point. Let's go ahead and go through the desktop real quick just to get a feel for this Artix Linux desktop environment. So here we have a computer, which just takes us to what seems to be the root directory of the computer and opens up a file manager. Following that, uh, we have Savvy Nick, which I assume takes us to the home folder, and it does. And you can see here I have access to a couple different directories from here, such as my desktop, the public music directories, um, as well as videos. Also on the bottom right, you can see what the total disk space is and how much is uh, currently available. We can also see what directory we're currently in, with this being the root directory. If we go back, you can see down here that we're in the root directory now with, with bin, boot, and a bunch of other ones here. So if we go back to computer, I guess this is one directory above the root, it seems like. So um, if you hit file system, I guess that takes you into the root directory. That's uh, a little different, but okay. And on the bottom right, we have the time, as well as the current volume. You can go ahead and change the volume through here, as well as remove any media that you may have mounted to your computer. Uh, currently, I don't have anything mounted. As you can see, no devices are available, but uh, you can do it from here if you do. And then we have the notifications. So you can clear all notifications as well as get your options through here. And it says here, uh, the power management says there's no battery. Well, this is a desktop, so that makes sense. If we go over here, we have our updates and what's currently available to us. Uh, you can go ahead and of course uh, update all your current packages using the Pac-Man application manager. Uh, I'm not going to do this right now, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this and exit out. And on the left of that, you have the current wired connection that you have or wireless connection. Currently, I am wired in with an Ethernet network, so you can see here that that's currently active. On the far left-hand side, we have Qt Terminal for our terminal, as well as Falcon for our web browser. And then we have the file manager again, so if you click on that, it will take you to your home directory. And following that, we have the option to go ahead and configure uh, multiple panels for this computer. On the far left-hand side, we have a start menu, which will take us through all the different subcategories of the Artix Linux system. As you can see, there's quite a few applications already installed with uh, various office tools, as well as programming tools, 
sound and video, and all sorts of other fun stuff. So that's pretty much it for the desktop environment. You can always search here at the bottom for any tools or applications that you might need to find or use. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Artix Linux. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them below in the comments section. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.